Now we'll look at an example of cable strength. In this, in this um, page, we're going to work with an example of finding the confidence level for a population mean using the st sample standard deviation for the T model. OK, so like we said, example, this will be about cable strength, which I don't think we've seen before in this class. A group of engineers, I know, because most, most examples we re revisit over and over. I don't think we've seen this one yet. A group of engineers develop a new design for a steel cable. They need to estimate the amount of weight the cable can hold. The weight limit will be reported on cable packaging, of course. The engineers take a random sample of 45 cables and apply weights to each of them until they break. The mean breaking weight for 90, or 45 cables is X bar, or the sample mean, 768.2 pound, pounds. The standard deviation of the breaking weight for the sample is 15.1 pounds. What should the engineers report as the mean amount of weight held by this type of cable? Well, let's use these sample statistics to construct a 95% confidence interval for the mean breaking weight of this type of cable. We'll check conditions now. Since we do not know the standard deviation of breaking weights of all the cables, the population parameter is sigma. We use the sam sample standard deviation, S, as the approximation for sigma. In this example, they gave us sigma or standard deviation being 15.1, but in this case, it's not talking about the entire population of steel cables. This was just the standard deviation of this sample of 45 cables. So we use we must use the T distribution model because we don't know sigma um, for the sampling distribution of means. Is the T model a good fit for the sampling distribution? Yes, because the conditions are met. First, sigma is unknown. Yes, check. The sample size, n equals 45, is large enough. It's greater than 30. OK, check. Now we'll use those first to find the standard error. OK, let's talk about that here. As usual, we start by estimating the standard error. The estimate comes from an interval, or sorry, comes from the formula sigma over the square root of n. However, we don't know sigma, so we're going to use s equals 15.1 that was given as an approximation of sigma. So instead of writing sigma over the square root of n, we're going to write s over the square root of n. s was 15.1, n was 45. So 15.1 over the square root of 45, it's about 2.25. OK, now that we have that, we'll find the margin of error. To find the margin of error, we need to find the critical t-scores that correspond to a 95% confidence level. This is just like the critical z-scores when we built confidence intervals for proportions, except that it comes from the t-model instead of the standard normal model. We will use technology to find the critical t-score. Set the confidence level to 95%, or in other words, the central probability because that's what the applet asked for, 0.95 is the decimal form of 95%. And the degrees of freedom is 44, because degrees of freedom is n minus 1, which is 45 minus 1 or 44. So we set those values in the applet. Central probability should be 95. I could just type it in, but I don't know why I'm doing that. I guess I'm almost there. I might as well keep going. There we go. And then what did we say? I already forgot. Degrees of freedom was 44, OK. OK, so it looks like our t-score in this case is 2.0154. OK, now we'll scroll down and see what we're going to do with that. OK, we get a t-score of 2.0154, as was said. Um, and it's shown below. Yeah, we, we saw that already. Um, now we are ready to calculate the margin of error for this confidence interval. Estimated standard error is, like we said, s over the square root of n. We already calculated that earlier, 2.25. The margin of error is the t-score times s over the square root of n. That's probably worth writing down, these two formulas here. Um, that's 2.015, which we just found the t-score to be, if we round it a little bit, times 2.25. That was what we found the estimated standard error to be. And we get about 4.53. From there, we'll find the confidence interval. We have all the pieces to build the confidence interval. So let's look at that now. We'll scroll down a little bit here. OK, looks like it's going to be x bar, the sample mean, plus or minus the margin of error. And we calculated both of those. It's um, the sample mean was seven. Well, they gave us the sample mean. It was 768.2 plus or minus. We just calculated the margin of error above. It was 4.53. If you take 765.2, you subtract 4.53, you should get this left number, 763.7. .7. And then if you add it instead, 765.2 plus 4.53, we should get this rightmost number, 772.7. .7. In conclusion, we are 95% confident that the mean breaking weight for all the cables in this study, um, and all the cables is of this type, is between those two numbers that we found 
763.7 and 772.7 pounds. Now we'll look at another example, cat's tail length. Now that's maybe less important, but more interesting somehow. <laughs> um, we want to estimate the mean length for a female's cat tail with 95% confidence. We assume that tail length, like most body measurements, are normally distributed in the population of female cats. We measure the tails of a random sample of 25 cats and find a mean score of nine inches and a standard deviation of three inches. Even though the sample is less than 30 cats, we can use the T model because we are assuming that, T, that tail length is normally distributed in the population of all female cats. So they, yeah, the sample size is not large enough to just say it's a normal model just based on sample size. But we've said this many times that body, body measurements, arm length, and even just height of people, weight, all that stuff, and animals as well as normally distributed. So anytime we're referring to measurements of bodies, whether it be human or, or animal, we, sh we should be able to use a normal um, population or sorry, a normal distribution. Using the applet, we find the critical T value for 95 confidence interval with a degree of freedom of 24 is 2.064. The standard error is S over the square root of N. S is three, the, square root of the N is 25. So three over the square root of 25 is about 0. 0.6. So the margin of error should be those two numbers multiplied together, 2.064, the critical T value, T sub C times standard error, to, uh, 0.6. If you multiply those guys together, you should get about 1.24. Um, so the confidence interval is nine, because um, that was the given mean. Let's see, I should scroll down a little bit here so we could see better. Um, here we go. So the, conf the confidence interval is nine plus or minus 1.24. We are 95% confident that the mean tail length of a female cat lies between, if we subtract them in the plus or minus nine minus 1.24, we should get the smaller number 7.76. Nine plus 1.24 gives us a larger number of 10.24. So between those two numbers, you should be pretty sure 95% confident that a, the mean tail length of a female cat lies in there. As before, we can envision this confidence level as an interval on the number line. As we learned previously, 95% of the confidence intervals with this margin of error will accurately estimate the mean tail length of cats. 